I'm Chef Adam Payne. I'm the chef here at Captain Bill's in Middleton. I'm actually the only chef I know of that works the market as well as shops oh, it. Oh, you do work the market? Yep. I uh, work predominantly for uh, Healthy Ridge Farms. Uh, Dan Bernard, the uh, owner and operator there, is actually my cousin. Uh, and we both grew up on and around orchards and farms. And uh, I got into making the, the food at the end, and Dan got into growing it and providing yeah. it. And so that's where we got these cherries from. We'll be making a Door County Sweet Cherry Salsa. It's quick, simple, and it goes great with just about anything. We're using it on a fish dish on, on grilled mahi-mahi, which isn't local, but unfortunately we're not that close to the ocean. Sure. But I've done it with, uh, with whitefish out of two rivers in, in Kiwani area. Um, you can do it on chicken, it's great on pork. If you want to do it over a nice piece of smoked trout and put it on a salad, it's fantastic that way so, too. Sweet cherries, all cherries are you know good and juicy. The sweet cherries, because of these, are so dark, they stain a lot. So I like to grab a pair of gloves. This is a pint of sweet cherries. That's, they normally come if you're buying and they come by the pint. It's about a pound, three quarters to a pound depending. We're going to stem these guys real quick. We're going to throw that stem over there. Um, and there's various ways to pit. If you have a cherry pitter, you can do that. The sweet cherries are a little bit more solid than your sour cherry that you use for baking pies. So I have a little trick. And this trick works for a lot of different things. If you have just a one gallon freezer zip top bag, okay. pour your cherries in. Get most, but not all of the air out. You want to have a fairly flat surface with it. And then if you have a meat mallet, tenderizer, or something along that lines, just take the side of it. You don't want to use your, you know, your tenderizing part. And just give them a good thump. Since we're going to be chopping this fruit up anyway, we're going to just break it away from the pit. You can just take it, pit pops right out. Well, that seems even easier than a pitter. Yep. So at this point, we've got all of our cherries pitted. And what we're going to do, just lay them out, grab a chef's knife, and just give them a nice run through. We're not going for evenness. We're not going for, you know, perfection on what they look like. It actually is a little bit better if you have some variation in your salsa. Gives it a little character, a little bit of texture. We're just going to transport this over to our larger bowl. Now when you're making this, if you want to make it in a metal bowl, you can. Just don't, don't store it in a metal bowl uh, or any metal container because the acidity in this and the acidity of the stuff we're going to add later on will really leach from that bowl, and leaching is not good. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting toxins and things that you really don't want in your system from that metal. Uh, I'd suggest if you have you know, Tupperware, Rubbermaid containers, something along that line. Grab four green onions. Now, I like the green onions with this because they're real mild. They add some great color, and they just, they're just a nice little touch. If you're not a fan of green onions, half of a medium yellow onion will work as well. And then just do a nice little dice on that. So I'm taking off the root end, and I'm just going to trim off a little bit of the end here where it starts to get thin and a little reedy. And we're just going to do a real thin bias cut, just a little bit of an angle. And it's not for any, any food reason except that it gives you a little more surface, so you get a little bit more of the flavor, and it looks cooler. And next we're going to grab red pepper. So trick with a red pepper, if you're doing it in something where you're not cooking it, and even sometimes cooking, is you get a bitterness sometimes with a red pepper, especially if it's raw. What that's coming from, we're just going to get rid of the seeds and everything here, it's coming from this inside little membrane. So if you just lay it flat and really carefully slide your knife along, now you don't have to get all of it out, but if you can get as much as you can out of there, you just get rid of some of that extra bitterness and you get more of that sweet bell pepper flavor. This guy we're just going to flatten, take him right out as well. Because I don't want a big pepper bite when I'm biting into this, I want more of that cherry flavor and the pepper is just there for a little crunch, a little background and for color. We're going to do a little bit finer slice on this, a little finer dice. So. You want to almost mince it, and again, if you want, you can always do a bigger chop if you prefer more pepper. 
Also with peppers, if you flip them with the skin side up, it's a little bit tougher on that first cut, but you don't have as many pieces stuck together when you're slicing it. Where sometimes when you know, you're slicing the pepper, you get done and you're like, oh, it's just stuck because the skin is so, so fibrous. So if you put the skin on the top, you're actually making sure that you're cutting through that skin. Right, exactly. What exactly is a salsa? Uh, salsa is just a sauce made with fresh ingredients, fruit or vegetable, using uh, some sort of acid to offset it. Uh, normally it's vinegar, lemon juice, something along that lines. Gotcha. Uh, you can do citrus salsas, you can do uh, tomato salsas, you can do just a pepper salsa. Uh, I like doing a roasted red pepper salsa from time to time. Mm. Roasted red peppers with uh, a little segmented orange and some mango, it's fantastic. All of our slicing, dicing, chopping and whatnot is done. So we're going to add in our acids. So what I'm using here, we have, uh, we're actually using Yahara Bay's Kirschwasa. It's a cherry brandy. Yahara Bay uses Door County sour cherries to make it. You can, there's multiple varieties. And we're not cooking it off, so there is going to be a little bit of alcohol in this, okay. but most of it dissipates as it sits. That's two tablespoons of the Kirschwasa. Okay. Then we have one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. You can use white vinegar or any other. I just find that the apple cider has that little bit extra flavor from the fruit, and it's a little bit milder overall. So I'm gonna throw a glove back on. You can use a spoon or spatula. I just find that a lot of times mixing this by hand is the easiest way to do it. So now we're going to add all of our dry ingredients. We're gonna start with two tablespoons of standard white sugar. Now there's a lot of sugar already in the sweet cherry, so we don't have to add a lot. The two tablespoons is just kind of to counteract the bite of the vinegar, okay. and it also helps the fruit to break down a little bit when the two counteract. One teaspoon of kosher salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper. Uh, pretty standard when you're using pepper and salt that you want to use about an eight to one ratio. Uh, in the restaurants, we normally keep a shaker that is eight part salt, one part pepper, handy at all times, just for all your seasoning. Really saves some time. We're going to go with uh, one quarter teaspoon of granulated garlic or garlic powder. Don't use garlic salt. Garlic salt is an unknown quantity. You don't know how much salt they're using. It's no set standard across the industry. So when you're adding that into any recipe that calls for garlic powder, you can really offset the salt that you're doing in that recipe because of it. Okay. And then we're gonna finish it off with an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Oh, nice. It just gives a nice little bite to it and adds, adds a little extra flavor. So we're gonna mix all that together. And if you have it in a smaller container, it's going to all interact with each other a little bit better, marry the flavors together better, mm -hmm. rather than having it in a larger container spread out where it's getting more oxygen on it so it's more likely to change color and you're just not going to get that nice blend of flavors. Gotcha. So we've got that all together. Now optimally what you want to do with this is cover it tight and then you want to refrigerate it for at least four hours before you're going to use it. If you can give it a day or two, it's really, I mean, after two days, this is going to have so much more flavor. It's going to have a richer color because your other vegetables are going to have soaked in some of that dark, dark juices from the sweet cherries, and it's going to be excellent. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Jai Ram, 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 J